Welcome to Accelerated Engineering. My name is John, and today we're going to look at building a recursive lambda function that converts hexadecimal code to text through the uh, conversion of an ASCII table. Now, I'm not going to build this one from scratch because my last tutorial showed how to build the text to hex converter from scratch. So this time we're going to start with that function. I assume you've watched that video already. If not, check it out. And we're going to convert it into a function that does the opposite. So I would like to start with the, uh, the lambda text that I used previously. And we'll just take that and copy it to another cell. And for a quick refresher on what this does, this function accepts an input message. If the message is blank, then it just returns a blank character because we know it's done. And if not, then it strips one character off of the front and replaces it with the hexadecimal code from my ASCII lookup table, and then passes the remainder of the message onto the same function again, remembering that um, when we can call this, we can just call the ASCII text to hex function. And we set that up in the name manager already. So that's, that's all been done. So what I would like to do is repurpose this code or this Lambda to now convert from hex to text. So I'm going to start by actually renaming its internal function call hex to text. Now, anytime that I call this, it's going to throw a name error until we actually assign this, um, assign this function a proper value in the name manager. So I'm going to try and set this up. We kind of have to get it right the first time because recursion is just like that. I'm going to feed it a message that has already been converted to hexadecimal. And now let's play with this. Okay. First things first, the exit condition is that the input message is equal to blank. This worked this last time, we're going to use it again. We'll keep our exit condition. If it gets past an empty string, then we know it's done and it'll return an empty string. So that's good. Okay, we've got this part here that's intended to convert one character at a time. And this part here that passes all of the message except for one character through to the next layer of the function. Now that's something that we should change right away because hexadecimal in ASCII is um, 16, is that right? 16 bits? No, it's 8 bits. Um, yeah, 8 bits or 1 byte. And in hexadecimal, that's always a pair of characters. So instead of passing it the input message minus one, I want to put the input message minus two. We're going to strip two characters off. Now, this xlookup function, I don't need to do the clever bit with the exact for the, the case matching like I did last time, because um, case doesn't matter when it's coming from hex. So I'm just going to take this there and say, let's start over with this x lookup function. This should be much easier. The value that I want to look up is the left two characters of my input message. That's, that's all that this needs to do with this step. Left two characters. Well, this is easy. My lookup array is going to be all the hex values in the table that I generated last time. And my return um, value is going to be in this, um, in this stack of characters here. Is that it? Are we done? I think we're done. Uh, I'm going to say that if I don't find anything, return an empty, an empty string just for the sake of it, or maybe even uh, we'll throw a space in there. If it gets a value it doesn't recognize, it will add a space. But there. So now name error because I haven't initiated this function yet. So let's jump into the name manager and do that. And we've already decided we're going to call this ASCII hex to text. The 
rest of my lambda goes in here, and I'm done. And look at that. It converts. This is set up right now. Uh, I should show it like this. It's set up right now so that whatever I type into this should get converted to hex or mapped to hex and then mapped back to ordinary text. So if I change this message to another message, what do we get? Right on. A longer hex string and it gets converted back. Is it case sensitive? Let's go to another message. To another message. There we go. We're done. So I, I, you know what I should do, actually, is I should say that uh, equals, just to show that I don't need that, uh, that lambda text anymore, that I can actually do this with just, or, with just our custom function calls. And it's done. Yay. So, that was easy, and that shows how easy it is to take a recursive lambda once you're finished with it and repurpose it to another lambda that just goes through string or uh, character by character. Uh, hypothetically, you could do anything here. You could use it to replace, like really map any set of characters to any other set of characters if you wanted to generate a like an encoding table or a decoding table. Yeah, it could be tons of fun. Anyway. This concludes the tutorial. Uh, thanks for watching. I'm going to put this converter up online in the next couple of days. The link should be in the description when I get there. Uh, if you download it, you owe me a like. Anyway, hope you're having a great day. Bye.